G'day and uh, welcome to another edition of Almost Daily Live Broadcasts uh, for the Future of Hospitality Initiative, brought to you by me, David Carruthers. Um, and it's Friday morning, Friday, going into the main trading days for uh, most hospitality businesses, unless you're running a a city, uh, a city-based Monday to Friday cafe. Um, you're probably uh, you're probably ramping up for um, a busy weekend ahead of you. So I just want to um, I want to uh, again cover this week. We're covering price as a um, we're covering price as a as the theme for the week and. I'll probably just backstep a little bit and remind for anybody who's new in, um, new into Future of Hospitality um, initiative I set up in, in April, and it's um, it's really aimed at helping hospitality business leaders things. One is to uh, see slightly ahead. Either, um, we're looking three to 12 months ahead at the risks and threats and challenges in the external environment that are coming towards us or that we're going towards them, whichever way you want to look at it. But what I'm basically doing is we're going from having dipped headlights to main beam headlights. And you know yourself when you're driving down a, um, a particularly windy road at, at reasonable speed uh, in the dark, um, put headlights on, you can only really see just in front of you. Um, but at the moment you put your main beam lights on, you're in a position where you can actually, um, you can see the hazards ahead. You can see the, the bend, the road bend signs and the humpback bridge that might be ahead of you that you don't necessarily want to um, hit in the dark 100 kilometers an hour or 100 miles an hour. So um so we're doing that and and then the other main objective and it's slightly more long-term objective for future of hospitality is to um is to start having strategic conversations that enable us to co-create the future of the industry that and not the future that maybe other people want for us or accidental future we end up in because we just haven't um we haven't shown um we haven't shown enough interest in what the future might look like um, and things just happen that you know things evolve and change but we can actually influence uh we can do a lot to influence what those changes are so uh, the f the first bit of the first objective which is really to shine some light on the threats and risks that are coming our way so that we can respond strategically to them rather than when we're in the eye of the storm um what that that raises a number of a number of issues that are going on in the world at the moment um and in rising prices and inflation and falling revenues and recession are two of the big ones um that are impacting our industry at the moment and i just want to i'm going to show you some slides that sort of support some of the um the suggestions I'm going to make the insights, the observations um, that come from me being an old bugger and having been around for 41 years in the industry um, and seen a couple of recessions and um, also having run a couple of uh, industry um, associations, a tourism association and a business association for seven years where um, this is sort of what I was doing on a on a more localized um, scale. The internet obviously makes um, makes the world a little bit more accessible. So let's let's take take a look at um, let's take a look at uh, um, the state of play with inflation, which is causing us rising right rising prices. And um, what I, I guess what I want to do is I just want to convince you that the people who are running the show um, aren't necessarily 
any more air of what they're doing um, with inflation than we are um, understanding the financial system. Um, so this is a, let's just add this. Trying to add a slide into the stream. It doesn't want to do it. I think I've got a, here we go. Right, there we go. Okay, so um, let's try again. So this is this is um, this is the Bank of England. So um, right now, at the moment, I'm grabbing data from wherever I can get it because normally we don't see information for months after it's relevant, um, and we need to know we need to know um, sooner. <laughs> Uh, what's what's going on so that we can respond to the external environment, align ourselves with what's changing and make sure our businesses survive and thrive. So this is the Bank of England um, and this is their forecasts on inflation. Each of those colored lines is within weeks of each other, their amended forecasts. Um, and in recent days, uh, they've suggested that the 13% that is shown at the top of this uh, graph that was the forecast just two or three weeks ago um, is now going to the forecast was th I think 13% in October and they're now forecasting 18% by the end of the year. Now this is the UK um, and this is data that I've been able to get for uh, the Bank of England. So the UK Central Bank, the CEO of whom the governor of the Central Bank, essentially the CEO of the Central Bank is um uh, I think he's paid £575,000 to get it this wrong. If he was the CEO of um, any other organisation, getting forecasts this wrong um, in such short spaces of time, I don't think he'd still be running the organisation. But anyway, um, it's not my remit to really question how competent the governor of the Bank of England is, is it? Um Okay, so the 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 two things that I want to I want to get across to you for some context is that they just don't they're not really in control of anything at the moment. This is just spiraling out of control. But what they keep doing, and it's this is the real concern, is if you see the the the, the downhill um, element of this graph, this chart, then what they really what they're trying to tell us is that it'll all be okay in about a year. Um, it'll be back down to 2 or 3% in no time. Now, somebody who tells you a forecast changes it a few weeks later, 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 um, clearly getting it wrong all the time, who you can see where those um, downward lines go. They're all in round about the same area. We're meant to trust that inflation is going to be back to 2 or 3% next year. Now, I hope it is. I hope it is for all of us, especially the people who aren't going to be able to uh, literally afford to buy food in their supermarkets at some point with the energy costs and food in inflation, it's going to be really hard on a lot of people. But I just, I find it difficult to trust what they say is going to happen in a year when they can't tell us accurately what's going to happen in two or three weeks time. And that's, that's the point here, that if you're imagining that this is all going away quite quickly, and that it you don't, you don't need to, you don't need to prepare for being in this volatile, uncertain environment for a significant period of time, then you're going to run your business in a way that believes everything's going to be okay next year, right? And that might lead you to make decisions about the strategies you adopt and the way you conduct your business, that this is just a blip. And what I want to try and inspire as many hospitality business leaders to do is to actually um, plan for the worst and hope for the best. And let's hope the best comes in and that the governors of the central banks in the Western world, um, despite their inability to forecast inflation a few weeks ahead, 
are absolutely correct in forecasting that in a year's time, inflation will be back to 2 or 3%. Um, but it might not happen. So what I want you to do, what I'm asking you to do, what I'm encouraging you to do, and what I'm trying to inspire you to do is have conversations in your leadership team about some of these things going on for some time. Let's say, you know, you scenario plan the problems that we've got at the moment in, in the environment, the external environment going on for the next two or three years. What would that make you, what would that make you do in terms of how your business? What would that, what would that mean in terms of your business? strategy next over the next two or three years you're going to have to, you know what what's going to happen is you're going to start thinking in a certain way that enables you to survive and even turn some of these challenges into opportunities and thrive and that's my that's my big message to everybody that you know these challenges are going to they they kept their they're potentially going to put us into stress they're potentially going to kill a lot of businesses off they're potentially going to cause a lot of harm but for those operators who are thinking about how to respond to the changes in the external environment and that they're developing strategies to actually win customers in tough times and and hold on maintain if not grow their margin in tough times and if you're putting strategies in place to achieve those objectives, then you've got every chance of th thriving. And not every business is going to go bust in the next two years, but a lot of them are. A lot of them are. In the GFC, um, lots and lots of businesses went bust. And what's happening at the moment is possibly GFC on steroids. So that's, that's one of the things. And just again, to, to reinforce how, how, far away from reality these guys are across the world right this is this is a global problem and it ain't going away anytime soon so this chart shows you lots of countries on the left hand side and the bar chart the bar line shows you the actual level of inflation now this bear in mind is only up until the end of june now we're six weeks six seven weeks seven weeks um further on from the end of June and this is way out of date because some of these some of the like the UK for instance is showing um, nine percent um, inflation at the end of June well it's going to be 13 in October and 18 supposedly by the end of the year um, Australia US Canada New Zealand um, which are the countries that I operate in um, that the, the everywhere everywhere is going crazy so um none of this is your fault none of this is your fault but you're having to you're having to deal with it right and that means that that means that you've got to take you've got to take responsibility not for this bullshit that's going on but for 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 enabling your business and your people to survive and indeed thrive through this now, if you can, if you can get your mindset, if you can get your mindset around around making this making this a a, a a positive challenge, and turning some of the threats into opportunities, and putting some strategies in place that make you really operate your business in a way that you've never operated it before, that actually you'll you'll have the most amazing sense of achievement as you get through this process and as you start to see the 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 output and the outcomes that you're creating as you put strategies in place that deal with each of these challenges so really it's an incredible process some of you are going to be are going to become absolute guns at operating in a dynamic environment but you've got to change your mindset. You've got to change your mindset away from the way the industry has been running for the last for the last decade or two, at least. Now, the um, the other big thing on price is uh, inflation. So we've talked about inflation. Inflation is pushing is pushing up.
prices. So we've got a rising prices issue because of inflation and it's spiraling out of control. And there's every, <laughs> you know, these governors of the central banks. Oh, I wish I could put them in a room with all of you and get them to explain why they say what they say, because they know more than they're putting out in the media. They know that this is out of control. But, you know, why would they Why would they ever say that they don't really know what they're talking about? <sighs> Sigh. Um, so what this is telling us is that 25%, this is up till the end of June, so this is reasonably recent um, data. It's 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 a survey that McKinsey did over a three month period. It's in Europe, and what it says is that twenty five percent of people going to buy food from their normal places, which are supermarkets, hypermarkets, specialty grocery stores, and convenience stores, twenty five percent of them have shifted from their normal brand, right, their normal supermarket brand, and they've gone to a discounter. Now this is massive, not. For our industry, because we're not supermarkets, but because this is what consumers are thinking. This is the consumer mindset at the moment. Consumers are having their, well, they're getting less for their money, less for their income. Now, in our industry, we're not, we're not dealing with the essentials of life, like food and energy, which are the two biggest things going up. We're dealing with what's left at the end of the day. We're dealing with discretionary income. We're dealing with, with an amount of money in people's pockets that's dwindling. And if you think that one in four customers are switching brands for their essentials, what do you think they're going to do when it comes to things like going out for a drink, going out for a meal, catching up with friends, going out for coffees, having a coffee every day, um, they're going to start changing their behavior. Now, we're in an environment where over the last few months, the biggest challenge in many respects has been to get operators, hospitality business leaders like yourselves to actually respond to rising, price, rising cost prices and look at putting prices up and, and keeping up, keeping your margin up with the rising the rising cost prices. Now, the next challenge is actually going to be to understand when the, that initial strategy, which is a strong, it's a good strategy, but that when that initial strategy, because this isn't a blip, this is going to go on for a while, when that's reached its saturation point in your own business. And the example, the analogy I'd give you is you know, there's only so much somebody's going to pay for a, a, a bowl of spaghetti bolognese. And then they're going to start looking elsewhere to see whether they can get better value. And they're going to they're going to respond to deals that are going on in the marketplace. Now, I'm not promoting um, discounting um, as, as such. And the supermarkets that are called discounters, essentially, they don't discount right what they do is offer their own brands they um they price deliberately below the, the the major supermarkets they have a different way of doing business um what they don't do is have kellogg's cornflakes at 20 percent off and that's what i want you to think about because what we're going to have to do the people the operators the hospitality business leaders that thrive into the future are going to be the ones that are able to start redesigning their business model. And the, the, there's two objectives that I think that I think most of you, not all of you, but most of you would benefit from setting in your business. And one is that the focus needs to initially be on customer retention. And that means that means anticipating the fact that you could potentially push your prices up to a point that pushes your customers out of the door. And we know, we know from something called price elasticity of demand that as you push the price up, the volume goes down. 
and it's a it's a curve and um what i might do for next week is pull out the um is pull out a, an example of that curve but what it shows us clearly is there's an optimal price that we can sell something at that gives us a, a an optimal volume and we get the most margin and as we push price up and also as we push price down um, that volume can reduce and the overall margin reduces so there's going to be a lot of businesses that are that are excited at the fact that they've realized they can push prices up and customers will pay but they won't beyond a certain point and what i want to do is encourage you to capture the right point at which to change your strategy and start to redesign your menu design redesign your dishes redesign the way you offer service but we're going to have to innovate we're going to have to run our businesses differently going forward now i know that we're doing this in an environment where we've got systemic staff shortages as well which back in april when i started this um this initiative the future of hospitality back in april the biggest single issue was systemic staff shortages but what was clearly coming and i could see from conversations i was having with hospitality business leaders that we could we could see some of the other issues that were coming towards us and they've just gone berserk we've got the most volatile um the greatest level of uncertainty it's unprecedented in modern history and particularly in our industry so if you think that you're going to be able to do the same thing that you used to do run your business the same way you used to do and succeed over the next two or three years there's only going to be a very very small percentage of you get away with that and what I, i'm going to show you this graph i've got a i apologize for the size of this and i will get it enlarged but i i um i only pulled this out of them it was it's a mckinsey survey again um now what this what this shows you is it's just 2000 to sorry 2020 the beginning of the pandemic to now and the the gray um area is the decline of restaurant spend during the pandemic right we all know that places got closed so we didn't have growth we had decline and the black line is the average of all sectors not just restaurants but all sectors of, of industry and commerce so everybody had a blip that went down um, at the beginning of the pandemic and then the blue is restaurant growth coming out of restrictions so we all know that people went crazy and came out and wanted to eat and drink and party um, and you can see that the restaurant sector did particularly better than the average because the blue goes higher than the black line initially right now what i want you to look at is the far right hand side so what's happened is that we've had this euphoric um, reaction to restrictions going people coming out and spending a load of money and then in the last few months we've had all these world events happen we've had um, russia ukraine conflict we've had rising prices uh, particularly on food and energy which have, which impact everybody um, we've had the scare the, the media has been pushing in inflation and rising costs and everything being unaffordable people have found their discretionary spend going down and you can see the blue the blue right up to now has dropped massively now some of you might still be in that euphoric growth bit um but i'm suggesting to you not all but most of you won't stay there if you haven't already felt this fall in revenue so it's absolutely critical that we innovate and that we 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 get to a point where we've pushed prices to a point that we're not going to be able to sell the same dish of spaghetti bolognese for twice what we were selling it for six months ago and what we actually need to do is come up with a different way of of creating a dish that people are going to love now there's all sorts of ways we can approach this and that's that's some of the strategies we'll talk about in future daily lives um 
which we talk about some of this stuff at my strategy masterclass that I'm doing once a month free to hospitality business leaders. Um, and these are conversations that, that I, what I want to do is really raise the questions. I want to give you some insights as to what's happening going forward so that you can have these conversations inside your business with your leadership team. Now, whether you own or you manage a venue or a group of venues, doesn't matter. These conversations need to take place either at a single venue level, if that's what you own or operate or manage, or at a group level, um, and particularly groups that have got um, standardized menus that are driven centrally. Um, you know, how are you going to respond to these changes in the marketplace, these rising costs? How are you going to respond? Are you going to are you going to do a centrally driven response, or are you going to find a way to enable local managers to make more local decisions? that actually respond to what's going on locally? Are you going to push control a little bit further out into, um, into a decentralized model or are you going to keep everything centralized? Lots of decisions to make. And, you know, if we can get our mindsets around to, this is a challenge, it's a business. Businesses are a challenge. We've we've gone through the pandemic. If you've come out of the other side of the pandemic and you're still running, you're still running your business and you didn't, you, your business didn't die, then you know you survived. And what we've got to do is we've now got to far, you know, the probably the biggest, the biggest two adaptations that took place during um, the COVID restrictions, depending on your degree of lock out, lockdown. Um, um, were things like introducing takeaway menus and contactless uh, contactless payments and deliveries and things like that. That was the level of innovation. And places that had never done a takeaway menu, I had lots of clients who uh, introduced takeaway, uh, takeaway and made money out of just running takeaway in Melbourne. Um, I, I've, seen, I've seen lots of different innovations, but they've mainly been around... Um, uh, offering offering uh, takeaway and delivery during um, lockdowns and and the 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 fear that consumers had about touching something that somebody else had touched this is different this is something that requires um, real careful thought about about changing the way you do business your energy costs are going to compete with rent soon so how do we manage energy costs? How do we actually control, um, you know, th this idea that in the past we've always just switched things on in the morning and switched them off at night um, and they've run all day long, whatever that might be. Um, how do we deal with rising cogs and, and not pushing the price of a bowl of spaghetti to such a level that customers walk away from our places? So next week... Um, Next week, I'm going to continue these conversations and we're going to talk more about specific strategies that businesses can operate. Um, if, you're, if you've been watching this live, that's great. And I'd appreciate, um, I'd appreciate you saying hi when, when, uh, when you're on live. And if you're watching the recording, please uh, comment, um, like, give a reaction, put your thumb down, put your thumb up. Um, Tell me I'm talking bullshit. Tell me that you're feeling the pain. Um, tell me that you think you want to hear more and what you want to hear more of. Th this, this daily live is designed to um, enable conversations to take place around the subject that I put into the newsletter, the Future of Hospitality newsletter, um, which is a uh, pretty much weekly um, weekly. Uh, publication and the each newsletter during the month supports some of the issues that I talk about in the um, industry insights briefing that's a video live video briefing for an hour that I do um, that I do once a month and um, yeah I just we got about four we're over maybe 
four and a half thousand hospitality business leaders are um, taking part in the briefings. Uh, the monthly briefings are subscribed to the weekly newsletter um, and are showing up for daily lives and coming to master classes. Um, and I, look, it's um, it's 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 my way of trying to make a difference, which is one of the five pillars of success that I talk about within Future of Hospitality for you guys to do as well. Um, and that's it. We're up to 30 minutes and it's time for me to say goodbye. Have a good weekend and I'll see you next week. Love you and leave you.